Megan's mother was out of the picture. Thomas Markle was a single father, but he adored Megan. He dotted over her. He spoiled her. He treated her like a princess. Now, pop psychology and doctors who are not psychologists, like Dr. Maite, Harry's doctor, tell us that all problems stem from trauma. They all stem from not getting exactly what you want, that humans are meant to have no adversity at any time, and if we have any, it's going to cause us problems, and we need to spend all our time talking about it in perpetuity. But common sense in the past tells us that there are also issues with always getting what one wants as a child, thinking the world revolves around oneself, not having discipline. And I believe these things are very, very important. One thing that I read from Thomas Markle, he's a nice guy, but I think he has a bit of neediness, particularly when it comes to women. And that's going to be extremely important later. And then again, Megan, I believe, learned, particularly from her father, that she always gets what she wants and nothing that she does not want to happen should happen. And that is also very important to the future breakdown of their relationship. To me. So nobody tells you anything? No. Nobody prepares you? No, no I mean, no, but even down, yeah, sorry, but even down to like the national anthem, no yeah. one thought to say, oh, you're American. You're not going to know that. That's me late at night Googling how, what's the national anthem? Thomas Markle gave Megan an objectively wonderful financial life style. She went to one of the best private schools in Los Angeles. She went on lots of trips. She went to the Royal Palace to visit. And even though she got scholarship opportunities, she wanted to go to Northwestern, one of the most expensive colleges in the United States, and Thomas Markle paid for it. A big thing with Megan is she seems to be completely status obsessed. So her past, her story can change with the times based on what's going to give her the most status. Now, this is early 2000s, mid 2000s. At this time, being well off, Chanel, a sorority girl, this could give you status. But now things have changed where the story of she was a victim, she is a victim, her father's no good, is a lot more in vogue at the moment. Now we come to Megan's decision to fully cut her father out of her life. No matter what's going on, he had a stroke, he's still cut out. So it's a full cut out. She acts as though he does not exist. How did this happen? I believe it happened in three phases. Phase one is Thomas Markle seems incredibly nice, but a bit needy. And I believe he gave Megan everything she wanted and he did not set boundaries. And what can happen when one person gives another person everything they want and they don't enforce any boundaries? If they do one little thing that the person they're spoiling does not like, the reaction be it can be very extreme. So, you know, Megan got into a school that was cheap with a scholarship. And Thomas just says, oh, no, I'll, I'll pay all of my life savings, made himself poor, basically, to send her to Northwestern. And he did stuff like this constantly, just did anything she wanted. You could see her on film insulting him. He never enforced a boundary. And then that leads to that extreme reaction when he does anything she does not want. And check out the exact specifics of why she cut him out of her life. It will blow your mind. I'm very disappointed about it. I don't think that... Uh... I mean, I, I've, uh, I've apologized about this thing, uh, what happened uh, at least a hundred times. Thomas Markle's crime was taking money which he needed to pose for paparazzi. To me, that seems like his personal choice. I honestly don't see what's so awful about it. And to me, that points to Megan's inflexibility and Megan and Harry being extremely controlling, where someone not following their exact narrative causes them to be enraged. In fact, Megan treats this as though her father passed away and of course this makes her more of a victim. I've lost... There's a lot that's been lost already. Mm. And I grieve a lot. I mean, I've lost my father. I lost a baby. I nearly lost my name. I mean, there's the loss of identity, but I'm still standing. You didn't lose me. Uh, I would have always been there for her. I, I'm, I'm there for her now if she wants me. 